Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and I'm the owner, creator, and coach for Believe in Better Finances. So for today's video topic, we're going to be talking about how to save for that summer vacation. So I hope for some of you, you're thinking ahead of time so that way when summer gets here, you'll be ready to go to have a, you know, a nice family trip or a trip with your spouse, whatever it may be. Um, so that being said, if, if you're watching this video as I upload it, we're currently in March. So you've got just a few months before summer's going to be here, the kids are going to be out of school or whatnot, and um, yeah, summer will be in full swing. So to help prepare and not bust your budget when it comes to taking a vacation, I thought I would do a video all about how to save for that summer vacation and just some of my tips and things like that to help you prepare for it. So tip number one is going to be determining your destination. So that's the very first thing is we got to figure out where do we want to go. Um, and so what I would recommend is for one, figuring out is this going to be a family trip? Maybe this is going to be a trip for you and your spouse. So obviously we got to figure out how many of us are going to be going in the family. And then also you want to research, I would recommend maybe two to three different destinations or locations. So um, depending on what your budget will allow, if things are a little bit tight, um, then you may have to be a little bit more strict on where you go, uh, things like that. But um, again, think about do you want to go to the beach somewhere? Is this going to be like a mountain slash cabin type retreat? Um, maybe it's going to be something simple that's kind of pre-planned out like a cruise. Whatever it may be, you just want to think about what kind of vacation you want to take over the summer. And then again, don't look into just one location. Get, have a few options that maybe work um, a little bit better with your budget once you actually do the research. So tip number two is going to be then researching the cost. So first thing you want to think about is transportation. So depending on what your destinations of choice are going to be, you need to think about are you going to be able to drive to those locations or are you going to be able to fly to them or is it a must that you have to fly? Again, determining all those factors can help you figure out which destination makes the most sense for your situation at that time. If you do fly into your destination, um, you also want to think about transportation once you get there. So depending on whether you're going to a resort or something like that, um, maybe you won't need to rent a car, but maybe you will. Maybe you want to get outside of the city limits wherever you're at um, and go, you know, just drive the area. So you need to think about rental car expenses or maybe you're in an area, but if you wanted to kind of get off site, they may provide some kind of shuttle service. So again, just look at all of those things and factor all those costs into planning out your vacation budget. Another big expense, um, obviously, that you're going to want to think about is your accommodations. So are you going to stay at a hotel? Um, maybe it's a nicer hotel. Maybe you're a little bit more on a budget, so you stay at somewhere like a Holiday Inn or a Best Western. Um, you also want to factor in maybe it's a resort, so it could be all-inclusive or partially inclusive trip at a resort. Um, or maybe it's one of those vacation rental properties, so things like Airbnb or HomeAway. Um, again, I'll link all of those websites and resources below should you want to check them out if you're not familiar with them. Um, but those all can be great options, and again, the pricing on all of those are going to vary depending on where you stay and the different types of accommodations that it includes. And then one of the other things that you want to consider when you're researching the cost is your overall activities. So depending on where you're going, maybe it's a beach destination, maybe there's not that many activities involved. Maybe it's just a nice week-long um, stay at the beach, you're going to hang out at the pool, build sandcastles, swim, things like that. So maybe there's not a lot of cost or research needed as far as activities is concerned. But if you were to go somewhere like Disneyland, obviously there's a lot to do in that area. Um, and things like that. So again, depending on where you're going, you definitely want to research your activities well in advance so that way you know how much things are going to cost per person based on the person's age and things like that. Similar to a cruise, um, I just recently purchased a four-day cruise, uh, kind of a girl's trip for me and my mom. It's going to be mid-May when we go, so it'll be right after Mother's Day that we get to go on this trip together. Uh, but I know as part of the added expense is once we get to Cozumel, which is one of the destinations we'll be going to, there's going to be activities that we can do on site once we get off the ship. So again, looking into all those different activities, researching the cost, uh, maybe re re reviews and things like that to see if people have commented on certain activities that may be worth the money or not. So again, those are all good tips regarding uh, things that you want to research cost-wise. 
My tip number three is also going to be considering things like vacation uh, websites that help put together vacation packages. So maybe you're busy, you just don't have time to do a lot of the research on your own. One of the easiest things that you can do is go through things like uh, the, the travels through Groupon or TravelZoo.com. Um, there's a lot of different travel websites like that that can make things really easy. Um, obviously, if you're going to do a cruise, you just go through like Carnival.com or Royal Caribbean. Um, it's a website to help plan out. You just select the month and the destination and things like that, kind of your budget. So those are great resources, so don't forget about those when you're trying to think of destinations and where you'd like to travel to. Tip number four is to review your budget. So here is where that money piece comes into play. At this point, when you're reviewing your budget, you really have to get down to reality and figure out what you truly can afford to spend. So maybe you would love to go on that international trip to Europe but realistically, it's a summer condo rental on the beach somewhere, and you know, that's all that's in your budget. So obviously, you've got to be true to yourself and be honest with what you truly can spend uh, based on what your budget will allow. If you're deeply in debt, it's probably not a good idea to be taking any vacations, period. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're still trying to get out of debt, again, that's where that's, that's kind of the tough decision of you have to make that short-term sacrifice for long-term gain. Once you're out of debt, you'll be able to have so much more money freed up in your budget that you'll be able to take those dream trips. Um, but again, if you are still in debt, you might want to steer clear of taking any vacations. Maybe you take a staycation instead, so you do something locally in your area um, as a way to offset some costs. And then another tip when it comes to your budget, when you're doing your budget every single month, if you do have a goal to take a trip, whether it's summer or fall or whenever, Again, start saving for those things now. That's why it's important to research and get a really good idea of what that, tr that trip overall is going to cost. The more you can start saving now, the better off you will be in the long run. So again, if you're wanting to take a trip maybe July or August before the kids go back to school, again, start saving for that. So figure out how much you're going to have to spend. Divide that out by the number of paychecks you have coming up between now and then. And again, put that money aside in a savings account and even nickname that account, you know, vacation fund or something like that, Disneyland fund, whatever it may be, uh, just again to kind of keep you focused and on track with your savings goals. Tip number five, which that brings me to, is you want to avoid charging your trip on a credit card. There's nothing worse then going on a vacation and then coming back and feeling like, okay, the vacation's over, but you're still paying this debt off your credit card because you charged everything. Again, a good financial advisor would tell you, you don't want to charge stuff on credit cards and the last thing you want to charge is a vacation that you're not going to have anything to show for when you get back and you're still having to pay for it. Tip number six is to figure out ways that you can earn extra cash. So again, like I mentioned before, start figuring out what money is available to squeeze out of your monthly budget to start saving for that trip. But in between doing all of that, are there other things that you can be doing to save up extra cash? So maybe out of your budget, you pay for you know the hotel and your fuel or your, um, your airfare or whatever it may be, but you still wanna have extra spending money when you go on any kind of a trip. So could you have a garage sale or two? We're coming into springtime where the weather's getting nice, so springtime, early summer, it's not too hot. It's a great time to have garage sales. You know, get with the kiddos if you have kids, if it's a family um, initiative. Have everybody get together, pull some stuff that they've not been using, a bunch of clothes or whatever, and try to have a garage sale and save some money that way. You might also consider selling some stuff. So depending on what you have, if you're not going to get anything for it at a garage sale, and maybe it's worth a little bit more money than what you could get at a garage sale, consider selling them on places like eBay, um, Craigslist. Maybe it's through one of those garage sale sites through Facebook. So a lot of times, depending on what city you live in, there will be a local like garage sale, online garage sale site through Facebook, which makes it really easy and you meet in a public place and things like that. So that can be another way just to earn some extra cash. Obviously, you can do your due diligence, take a really hard look at your budget, see if there's some things you can cut back on. Maybe you don't eat out as often, so you can free up some money for the trip. Uh, maybe your clothing budget gets a little bit smaller. Um, again, maybe you just figure out ways to trim back. So instead of hiring that yard man to mow your yard in the summer uh, between now and your trip, maybe you have one of your kiddos or yourself you know, DIY it so you can save some money that way. Tip number seven, get the kids involved. So I kind of mentioned this previously, but one of the things, I was doing some um, research online, watching some videos, and I, I thought this tip was really great. I don't have kids myself, 
Um, but I, I have worked as a teenager, so I'm not unfamiliar to having to actually, you know, have manual labor. But one of the great things that this lady re suggested was, you know, obviously we don't want to make the kids pay for their vacation. But there are oftentimes when you go on any kind of a trip, there are going to be souvenirs or toys or different things that kids are going to want to buy. So anything that the kids might want to buy when they're on their vacation, maybe there's a way that you can have them, you know, save up some money for some souvenirs or a t-shirt or that stuffed animal or whatever it is that they may want on the trip. So again, put some of that, you know, onus on them to figure out ways to save up for their vacation. Not only is it a great thing because you're teaching them the importance of saving, but it also gives them a targeted goal to work towards, knowing that, okay, when I go, I get to spend my money that I worked really hard for on this particular item. Um, so again, if they're teenagers, maybe, again, summertime is coming in uh, into play, so maybe they can mow yards, work up some cheap little business cards somewhere and have them pass them out to the neighbors and let all the friends and family know, hey, um, we're trying to raise money, my son or daughter's mowing yards. Uh, maybe they want to babysit or pet sit. Again, that's very popular for a lot of people that are looking for a babysitter or for like me, if I have to go out of town on business, I don't want to have to leave my dogs at a, you know, at home um, unsupervised, but it's cheaper than putting them up at one of those pet stores. Um, so again, you might look into doing some pet sitting. That's a great way to make some income. Uh, for the teenagers. If you have little ones and maybe they're not old enough to have a part-time job, that's okay too. You can still set up a chore system. So again, they're helping you, mom and dad, out in the home uh, to keep the house tidy when you're busy working and doing other things, but it also gives them the ability to earn some money as well to help put towards the trip. And then my last tip is just some other ways that you can save once you actually get there. Um, or in preparation of getting there. So once you've planned out your trip, you've researched the cost, you've figured out what you can afford in your budget, and you've booked it, um, some other things that you can do are look for a hotel that offers complimentary breakfast. So again, this might not seem like a big deal, but if you go somewhere for five or seven days, not having to pay for one meal out of each day can save you a lot of money. The other thing is, you know, again, depending on how many kids you have, that can get expensive as well. So those complimentary breakfasts, maybe they make some waffles or eat a bowl of cereal, and then you grab some of the bananas and apples and save those later for healthy, easy grab-and-go snacks. If you happen to be driving to your destination, one of the things that you can also do as a way to save money and plan ahead is to buy packages of bottled water and other snacks. So any kind of road trip, obviously you're gonna want a snack, but stopping at the convenience stores, the gas stations, that can cost you a fortune. Uh, you know, if you have two or three kids, between you, you know, and your kiddos having to buy sodas or water and, you know, cookies or chips or whatever it may be, try to buy all of that in advance so that way, for one, it shortens or hopefully lessens the number of stops you have to make in between uh, fill-ups with fuel. But also, again, it's not going to hit the, po the pocketbook quite as hard. Another tip that I personally like to do between my husband and I, anytime we travel, a lot of times, if we're truly on vacation and we're not in any hurry, we try to enjoy restaurants around the lunch hour. Because again, when you go dine out into, and I'm not talking about fast food places, I'm talking about actual sit-down restaurants, it's going to be a lot cheaper to be able to indulge and enjoy restaurant locations if you go during the lunch hour when they have lunch specials and things like that. So that's a great tip, again, depending on how long you're going. If you want to dine out, that's perfectly fine, but maybe try to hit it around the lunch hour rather than going at dinner time. One, it's going to be busier usually around dinner time, and you're going to pay a lot more money for oftentimes the same meal or same amount of food. So yeah, so those are just some, um, again, just some tips I have on other ways that you can save. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know I'm looking forward to my cruise with my mom in May. It's very exciting. And again, it's something we're starting now, so that way we can, you know, have everything paid for. So by the time we get back and get home, we'll have great memories left behind, but we won't owe any more money on that particular trip. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if Again, depending on if your situation allows for it, make a chance to plan that trip out, research it, save that money, so that way you can enjoy some time with you and your family and loved ones. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And be sure and subscribe for future videos on all things money. I'll see you next time.